Rights by Chrome Oxide, narrated by Bedridden Bear. Doc gripped the barred windows of his cell and watched as Mayor Billy swaggered back into Billy's town. He wore twin half-empty bandoliers of bullets slung over his chest and a revolver on each hip. Behind him, a gaggle of rights protectors approached the gate along with a female prisoner. Her calloused hands were tied together behind her back. Her clothing was unwashed and ragged. Overhead, the sun was high and it gleamed on a long brown hair that fell halfway down her back. Behind the cell bars, Doc shook his head. The prisoner jerked loose from the protectors and kicked one between his legs. The other grabbed for her, but she twisted away and ran out the gate. Don't let her get away. I paid a lot for her, Mayor Billy screamed. She was gone before anyone could stop her. Two protectors at the gate didn't leave their post. The four protectors who had been the mayor's escort ran after her. The fifth lay on the ground, curled up in a ball and holding his genitals with his hands. The mayor walked until he stood over to Protector Johnny. If you screw up again, it's back to working in the fields for you. Protector Johnny cringed. The mayor kicked him, then turned and walked back to his cabin. He sat down on the wooden bench outside the door and watched the entrance to his town. Fifteen minutes later, the four protectors walked back in. Rifles were slung over their shoulders and they carried the female, each holding unto an arm or a leg. The girl still struggled. There were new bruises on her face, arms, and legs. Doc wondered why the mayor had bought a female. There were plenty of females in town. Some were prettier than this new addition. Until now, the mayor had always had his pick of the females. Could he be tired of the locals and looking for someone new and different? This one was certainly more energetic than the rest. Mayor Billy hollered, Put her down. There ain't nowhere for her to run now. She gots to learn sometime. The moment they sat her down, she ran for the wall. But its splintered logs were too high for her to climb, so she ran around the perimeter looking for an opening. Protector Johnny! the mayor said. Bring her to me. By now, Johnny was back on his feet. He put down his rifle and jogged painfully after the girl. The other men laughed and bet on how long it would take for the capture and whether Johnny would get kicked again. He almost had her when she fell and rolled. Bitch, he cursed at her. She kicked him in the leg. Name's Harmony. Don't never forget. You're always bitch to me. Doc placed her at about five feet, two inches tall. Her tan indicated she spent most of her life working in the fields. Hard physical labor had made her thin and wiry. She ran towards the prison where Doc watched from his cell, pulled up short at the window and looked in. Help me, she stared into Doc's eyes. He stretched out his hand. Just as Johnny ran up and slugged her, she dropped to the ground. Johnny glared at Doc until he backed away from the window. Then Johnny picked Harmony up and carried her into the cabin. The mayor followed. After a period of time that was long enough to tie the girl to the mayor's bed, both men walked back into the camp. Doc left the barred window and sat down on his cot to think. He was the sole medical practitioner here at Billy's Town, and every time he saw something like that, he wondered if he had been better off letting his patients die. The mayor might object, but the worst that could happen was Doc might get traded off to another village. He decided to think about it. The next morning, Doc woke up and realized something was different. Then he realized, no voices. He peered out just as Harmony ran along the rough wall chased by Johnny. She looked like a wild animal trying to escape from a trap. If she paused close to the wall, one of the protectors stepped forward and swung the butt of his rifle at her. She looked around desperately. Her long, gleaming hair had been chopped off into a ragged mop. Every time she looked in Doc's direction, he smiled encouragingly, 
in case she might draw strength from it. But Harmony sprinted out of view around the perimeter of the camp. The next time Doc saw her, she was breathing heavily, moving slowly. But she was still in better shape than Johnny, probably from doing that hard labor in the fields. Johnny was winded and he didn't look happy. Johnny panted after her. Hey girl, where you running to? Ain't no way out. She stumbled, caught herself and jogged away. Doc caught snatches of their speech. You ready to give up? Nah. She staggered in the direction of Doc's window. Harmony don't, he started to say. And then Johnny caught up and punched her in the back. She screamed and collapsed. Doc clenched his fists. The next morning, Johnny came to tie Doc's wrists. Doc knew better than to ask for what purpose, but they weren't tied closely together, so he knew that meant his hands might be needed for some future task. The ropes were uncomfortable, but it meant he would be out of his cell for an extended length of time. It also meant he might have a chance to escape. He hoped Harmony was coming along. The morning dew hadn't burnt off yet, and the scent of flowers filled the air as Johnny led Doc out of his cell. Mayor Billy appeared in the doorway of his cabin, dressed in his bandolier and pistols, which meant they were all leaving Billy's town at least for a while. The mayor rarely left town, only for important purchases of supplies like the time he purchased Doc from the People's Republic of Jimmy's town a few years ago. There was no sign of harmony. Doc didn't dare ask about her either. They all trudged past the Karl Marx Social Justice Safe Space and Education Gulag, which was located just inside the log wall. The gulag consisted of an open patch of dirt with a male rights advocate standing in front of a group of children sitting cross-legged in the dirt. Class had recently started because the students were still reciting the Earth's rights. The Earth has the right to live free of man-caused pollutants. The earth has the right to live free of man-created structures. The earth has the right to live free of man defiling the planet by digging it up, plowing it under, or cutting it down. Animals have the right to live free of oppression by men. The rights advocate glanced at the mayor and then back at the children. He pointed at one of the students. Now, one at a time, you will start the recitation of our basic human rights. We have the right to food. We have the right to shelter. We have the right to clothing. We have the right to health care insurance. We have the right to suppress the speech of those who disagree with us. We have the right to choose a non-binary gender. We have the right to have sexual companions. We have the right to be watched by our government. Long ago, Doc had read a different book about rights. None of them required chains or armed rights protectors. The author had written about certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The children had been trained to put special emphasis on the last right. We have the right to be punished if we disobey the mayor, they exclaimed. Smiling after hearing his favorite right, Mayor Billy led Doc, Johnny, and another rights protector named Freddie out beyond the wall. The dirt paths led to Sammy's town to the south and Jimmy's town to the west. They walked north through the grass. Doc realized this was a scavenger expedition. That meant they probably expected to find medical supplies and he would be needed to identify valuable drugs. Unlooted medical facilities were rare. They walked north until they hit a stream. Mayor Billy stopped. Johnny, Doc is your responsibility. If he hurts himself or wanders off, you will pay for your negligence. He stepped into the shallow water and walked upstream to the northwest. Doc knew that would help throw off anyone who might be tracking them. The sun was overhead before they left the river. It wasn't long before they crested a hill. 
At the bottom was a small valley and a partially collapsed rusting metal fence. Freddy signaled for everyone to stop. We crossed the fence here when I was here afore. I done walked all around, but it didn't see no gate. All Doc could think about was how much his feet hurt and the size of the blisters he'd have when the day was over. He hadn't walked this far in years. Billy looked around. Are you sure? I've never seen a building before that didn't have a road nearby. This one don't. Lead on. After they stepped over the fence, they stopped on a large concrete pad with weeds growing out of the cracks. There were faded lines on the pad that didn't look like parking lines. Doc looked down and then towards the building. This pad is large enough for multiple trucks to park, but without a road, how would any get here? He scanned the horizon. This building can't be seen unless someone stands on the surrounding hills or from the sky. Beyond the pad, an odd medical cross stood over the entrance to the building. While none of the rights protectors could read, everyone recognized the twin snakes wound around the staff, which was superimposed on a cross. Doc didn't think anyone else would realize that the twin snakes weren't supposed to be biting each other. A sign over the entrance read, Contagious Disease Creation. Doc doubted anyone else presented had enough education to read the sign. The building seemed undamaged. Doc hoped this might be an answer to his prayers. Standing on the pad, Billy turned around. Johnny, it's your turn to enter the building. You go with Doc and don't let anything happen to him. We can't afford to buy another doctor. This ain't fair. I've been guarding him this whole time. The mayor stepped towards Johnny and rested his hand on his revolver. Are you challenging the election results or my ability to run my town? Johnny looked down at his feet and then up at the mayor. Nah, mayor. Nothing to do with the election. I prepared and filled out every ballot for every member of Billy's town. It was a fair vote. Every ballot was fair. All's I'm saying is them old buildings is unsafe. If and it ain't gonna fall on a person, there's things living there that's too small or too big to be scared of a rifle. Mayor Billy smiled. Just so you aren't questioning my authority or ability to lead. Johnny nodded and turned towards Doc. Don't make no trouble for me or else. Doc didn't say anything. Johnny walked up to the sliding glass doors and slammed the butt of his rifle against them. The rifle bounced back, and both Rifle and Johnny fell to the ground. Everyone in the party laughed except Doc. Johnny tried a few more times, but the door still didn't break. Doc was impressed. Whatever the clear substance was, it wasn't like any glass he'd encountered before. That and the sign confirmed that this was no normal medical facility. Johnny pointed the barrel of his rifle at the glass. The mayor shouted, Don't shoot! When Johnny lowered his rifle, the mayor continued in a normal tone of voice. The sound of gunfire carries too far. We don't want anyone to know about this place until after we've rescued the contents for ourselves. Sorry, Mayor Billy. Johnny easily forced the sliding doors apart. Freddy took a hand crank flashlight from a tattered rucksack and handed them both to Doc. Johnny pushed the butt end of his rifle into Doc's back. Move it. We ain't got all day. Doc stepped in, holding the light. That's odd. The exterior doors weren't locked, and all the interior doors are open. Johnny frowned and clutched his rifle nervously as he followed Doc from room to room. There were no windows, and the hand-cranked flashlight was the only source of light in the building. The first few rooms were filled with filing cabinets and computers. Computers were once a basic human right, but that was back when they could still be made and there was electricity to run them. Electricity was another basic human right that wasn't mentioned anymore. As Doc moved deeper into the facility, he found a room where he picked up a few dust-covered packages that contained syringes and needles. He knew about an unopened package but had never seen it before. He passed over bottles bearing the skull and crossbones on vials and bottles. 
He wouldn't be allowed to return with any of those. They were too obvious. Perhaps he could find a biological hazard or chemical weapon. It was unlikely either symbol would be recognized by Johnny or anyone else. A first aid station was set up in the corner. Doc flicked the light quickly over it. He needed to avoid suspicion, so he picked out various drugs that might actually help rather than hurt. Most of the drugs were stale dated, but there was a much wider selection that he'd ever seen before, or that a normal hospital stocked. He walked out of the room and deeper into the building. Hey, Doc, ain't you got enough? Johnny jerked his rifle impatiently. This is the first time I've ever seen a medical facility that hasn't been looted. I need to take one of everything to determine which drugs are worth coming back for. Johnny grunted, but allowed Doc to continue searching. Doc started shaking when he saw the bioweapons research sign. With his back to Johnny, a big grin plastered over his face. There were an amazing number of vials, bottles, and inhalers on the shelves. These drugs hadn't reached their expiration date yet, even though all the stocks in the first aid station had expired years ago. It figures that the shelf life of drugs that extended human life would be shorter than the ones that would shorten human life. Doc collected a few of everything, even the ones he didn't recognize. He shuddered while reading some of the names and the symptoms. Next to the drugs were stacks of innocuous drug labels designed to fit over the existing labels. He flipped through the labels until he found ones in English that identified the contents as vitamins. He grabbed a handful of the vitamin labels and a number of bottles that guaranteed their contents to be hazardous to human life and contagious bioweapons. When Johnny wasn't looking, Doc grabbed an inhaler from a shelf, squeezed, breathed deeply, and placed it in his bag. Okay, we're done here. Are you sure? You didn't take much from that cabinet. All the pills, injections, and inhalants on each shelf are the same drug but in different forms, so I don't need one of everything. Doc continued taking samples from other shelves and cabinets. When we get back to town, I'll be able to look up these drugs in my desk reference guide. Then we should come back tomorrow with a larger crew and a cart so we can collect them all before some other town stumbles on this place and clears it out. There's enough here that Mayor Billy approves. We'll have some great trade goods. As they walked towards the exit, Doc stuck his hand in the bag, cracking and peeling off vitamin labels and placing them on the bioweapon containers. Outside the door, Mayor Billy was waiting. He snatched Doc's bag. Let me see. He pulled out the bottles, examining them, and put them back. We need to get back to Billy's town where I'm safe. Doc was limping, panting, and sweating heavily by the time they left the stream under his load of medicines. To take his mind off the pain, Doc racked his memory for shreds of ancient teachings that remained. Moses had led free slaves through the desert. It had taken 40 years before a new generation grew up thirsting for freedom instead of new slave ma masters. Perhaps the bioweapons in the bag would do the same for the current generation of elites and entitlees who believe rights were given by the government, rights that required coercion. Perhaps the bioweapons in the bag would do the same for the current generation of elites and entitlees who believed rights were given by the government, rights that required coercion. Soon they reached the outskirts of town. The fields were being tended by chained entitlees, guarded by armed rights protectors. The sun was setting as they finally entered Billy's town and walked past a different set of students in the education gulag still chanting, We have the right to food. We have the right to shelter. We have the right to clothing. We have the right to health care insurance. We have the right to suppress the speech of those who disagree with us. We have the right to choose a non-binary gender. We have the right to have sexual companions. We have the right to be watched by our government. We have the right to be punished if we disobey the mayor. Smiling indulgently, the mayor turned to Doc. Prepare a list of the stuff we left behind that still needs to be collected. We'll do it tomorrow without you. You're too valuable to risk outside again. 
I'll have your list ready for you in the morning if I have no distractions. Okay, I won't send any medical cases to you until you make the list. However, you still haven't produced a replacement, Dr. Billy smirked. So I'm sending over someone special tonight. You be nice to her because she's mine next. Billy turned and walked back to his cabin. The sign over the door said, All people are equal, but some people are more equal than others. Johnny and Freddie escorted Doc back to his prison cell. The sign over the cell said, Health care is a basic human right. The other cells were empty because health care was the only remaining basic human right requiring heavy security. Standard security was adequate to ensure the availability of the other basic human rights. Doc sighed and sat down wearily on his cot while Johnny locked the cell door. He liked administering care to the people of Billy's town. He just wasn't sure if keeping slaves alive and healthy was doing more harm than good. Every time he helped an entitlee who was shot or whipped by a rights protector, he wanted to strike back and overthrow the system. He wanted to be the last doctor this group or any other would ever hold in chains. Doc finished compiling the list of bottles and packages with phony labels. If he was lucky, when Mayor Billy traded supplies with nearby towns, he passed on one or more weaponized toxins. Doc looked through his own collection of medications for his anti-fertility drug. He was running low and wondered if he'd need to use them this evening. Since entitlees were allowed to identify with whatever gender they choose, he was able to save his drugs for the times when they assigned him a biological females. Mayor Billy wanted Doc to impregnate a female so Billy's town would have a replacement doctor. Doc indicated to do everything in his power to prevent that. He glanced around his cell. He managed to make a few improvements, but it was still a prison. He thought about some of the other basic human rights that were no longer mentioned. He wasn't even sure what collective bargaining over time pay or internet access was. He knew what cell phones and home entertainment centers were, but he had never seen any that worked. It was so puzzling to think that as the government provided few basic human rights, the number of entitlees in chains should be decreased. Instead, the opposite happened. He looked up at the door to his prison cell opened. He looked up at the door to his prison cell opened. The mayor walked in, holding Harmony by the arm. He slapped her once before barking. I bought you because you are a proven breeder. We need a doctor, and you better give us one. The mayor shoved her towards Doc's cot, walking out, and locked the bars. Then he spoke through them to Doc. Get busy. If you can't produce a new doctor soon, I'll trade you off for someone who can. Health care is one human right I will not give up. The mayor stomped out of the prison. Harmony skittered to the cell door and cowered like a frightened animal. Everyone calls me Doc. What is your name? Her fear seemed to fade slightly as her eyes searched his face. Harmony, she whispered. Doc moved towards the supply cabinet. It was a basic human right of men to have sexual companions. For that to be a right, women had to have the basic human right to be available for men. For some reason, Harmony rarely tried to enforce that right. He glanced back at Harmony. She looked angry rather than resigned like all the females and other genders he'd been assigned previously. Doc picked out an anti-fertility pill from his medicine cabinet and swallowed it. He hated unwilling partners, but he wouldn't trust his life to any bedmate who might report his inactions to the mayor. Did Mayor Billy explain what we need to do here? She nodded her head yes. Why don't you undress and lie down on the bed? She continued to cringe by the cell door. You do know they will hurt you if you don't. Doc caught an angry glare before she turned away from him. She slowly and painfully removed her blouse and skirt. Her back was covered with recent and older scars. Doc winced at the sight. Breeders were valuable. 
so Mayor Billy always allowed time to heal after one punishment before ordering another. That meant Sammy's town, where she'd been originally traded, had punished her. He wondered what she'd done to be punished and sold off. I'm sorry anyone would hurt you like that. I know you have no reason to trust me, but I have something that will make you feel better. If you sit on my bed, I can apply some medicine on your back. She clenched her fists and stood rigidly for a few moments before sitting down. Doc turned back to his cabinet and removed a couple of jars of cream. One was the antibiotic, which would help heal some of the infected scars. The other had a mild pain reliever. When he touched her back to examine the partially healed scars, the girl shivered and tensed up. You will experience some pain as I rub these on your back. Every time he massaged an infected scar with the cream, she flinched. It will take a few minutes before you start feeling the effects. After he finished applying the creams, he moved away to sit on a chair. A few minutes later, she turned around and gave him a tentative smile. Her hands lay open at her sides. Thanks, pain smaller. She lay down on her stomach and spread her legs. Do it, me harmony, you good owner. I'm not your owner. I never own anyone. You home nice as mayors. This is not my home. It is a prison. I am as much as a slave as you are. She nodded. Doc coughed and a trickle of blood dribbled out of his nose. When he wiped his nose on his shirt sleeve, she smiled. He looked at Harmony and wondered if he should take a chance. She was different from the others. She hadn't lost her anger. Do you want to hurt the people who hurt you? Yes. Even if you have to die to kill them too? Me do anything. Her feral grin confirmed her words. He handed her a different inhaler than the one he'd used earlier and explained how it worked. Harmony examined the inhaler and looked at Doc. Hurt much? The label states there are no major side effects other than rigor mortis. She pressed the plunger breathed deeply and then coughed. Taste funny, don't feel no different. You shouldn't. People would stop using these individual serving size portions of bioweapons if they caused immediate discomfort or symptoms. Doc smiled. The warning label claims this is painless, but I doubt that anyone the government tested these on were entirely truthful. Need do anything? They won't force you to have sex with anyone else until they find out if you're pregnant with my child. Until then, you need to stay close to the other entitlees and breathe deeply on them. Me work kitchen, prepare food. Perfect. Be sure to breathe on all the food and the helpers, but try to avoid being obvious. I will, trust me. I do. The mayor would punish both of us if he found out what we just did. Doc undressed and climbed into bed, but lay down with his back towards her. She rolled on her side. You naked? Why you not take me? When the guards check on us during the night, they will be suspicious if we aren't naked. Harmony sighed with a relief. This is our secret. If this works, you won't be punished or have to lay with anyone you don't want to. Our only problem is that I don't know how long this will take. Harmony smiled. Me wait. Harmony slept quietly beside him. He coughed. His forehead felt warm and there were small lumps under his armpits. All signs showed he was getting sick. He curled his body around Harmony, cradling her, and fell back into a deep, satisfying sleep. The End